So hello fellow e-bike adventurers and today we're going back to another old trip of mine again before I actually had an e-bike uh, and a trip that again uh, was part of the process of convincing me it would be a bit easier if I had something to help me at the end of the day in the worst of the hills. Uh, so this is another way of leaving Dublin. It's also one you could do as a couple of days out and back. It's going to include a camping spot uh, on the way down. And so this was actually in that first pandemic summer of 2020. There were some friends of mine uh, camping in a garden basically in Dunmore East. Uh, so I decided I would cycle down to see them. Uh, now, it was near Lunasa, so I thought it would be interesting to do a route uh, that would stop off at some of the stone circles that are in West Wicklow. So that's sort of on the western edge of the Wicklow Mountains, more, more the kind of hills, I guess, than the mountains. Uh, to go down there and also I wanted to stop off on the way down in St Mullins I had visited that on another occasion I wanted a second look at it uh, so that would get me most of the way down um, so the initial stage of today is going to be getting out of Dublin the usual problem uh, this is a route that I haven't used otherwise in any of the other ones um, so I'm coming out the Chapel Lizard Gate of the Phoenix Park. I started it there because that's a one-way gate. It's only you only allowed to drive in, but you can walk out with a bicycle through the foot, foot gate. Uh, but the uh, cycle travel mapping program, of course, doesn't know that. So uh, I've done that. Uh, going through, immediately hitting the worst single hill of the trip, which is just after you cross the River Liffey. Uh, there's a very, very steep hill up to Ballyfermot. Um, on a manual bike, it's a good day when I actually managed to cycle it to the top. Uh, and on this day because I was fully laden it nearly killed me right at the start but anyway you're then coming through Ballyfermot and then going over to Clondorkin and the reason I went out via Clondorkin is I wanted to stop at the round tower at Clondorkin uh, and then from Clondorkin uh, coming out again usual city west business park usual industrial landscape with a short detour here to visit a couple of standing stones and I'll talk about them specifically and the other ones as we go along um, and then we're continuing to head west uh, another standing stone here at Punchestown uh, through Ballymore Eustace uh, and then two more st sets of standing stones as our uh, stone circles rather in this case as we go on down uh, Coming eventually, oh yeah, sorry, an ohm stone then at Donard, uh, and then uh, stopping off at Baltinglass to visit the Abbey, uh, and then going on to camp for the night, whoops, near Moonbreg. Uh, this is on the River Barrow. Um, so the barrow it, it was, is navigable and has some locks on it, and as usual when there's locks, there's generally a bigger green area around them where you can often camp, so I'll show you that as we go on down. Um, then to, on to St Mullins and then uh, and this is probably the important bit if you're doing this cycle as well down through New Ross but don't go through Waterford town itself don't head that way the road the roads here are basically terrible they're really busy there's a lot of traffic uh, you're much better off coming down and using the very very small ferry that runs backwards and forwards between pa uh, Passage East and Ballyhack and that gets us down the last bit of the road to Dunmore East. Uh, so Dunmore East is in my cycle from Cork to Waterford so you'll get to see more of the roads around that if you're interested in cycling around that in particular uh, and in fact it's also when I did the Waterford to Dublin cycle um, I also used this pass this small ferry before going to visit Hookhead. Uh, so that comes into a few other videos as well. But anyway, that's the overall route. Now let's get into the individual detail. So our first stop is going to be the Round Tower in Clondorkin. Uh, believe it or not, this 27 meter high tower is probably the oldest Round Tower in Ireland. Uh, there was a monastery on this site around 700, plundered by the Vikings around 800. Uh, so even though it's in the city, it probably is worth stopping off to have a look at. Our next stop 15 kilometers into the trip is the Boho Boy pair of standing stones from the Bronze Age uh, just outside Sagat. These are locally known as Adam and Eve. About 45 kilometers in you, near Ballymore Eustace you get to the Broad Lease stone circle. Uh, this is a big circle of I think 27 or 28 surviving stones. Possibly it had almost twice as many originally. Uh, but this is thought, in fact, to be a transition between uh, chambered tombs and sto stone circles, so probably early Bronze Age. 
just at the 50 kilometer mark and near Hollywood, we reach the At Greeny Stone Circle. So this is 16 standing stones and I think one outlier stone. Uh, it's yet another stone circle that's referred to as a Piper's, uh, Piper's Circle uh, and that sort of stories that you see mostly in England of people being turned to stone for dancing on the Sabbath or meeting with the devil or whatever else. Uh, it's a little bit back from the road. There's a lay-by you can pull into and then maybe it's about a 150 metre walk from there. Our route now turns up into the hills and quite quickly we reach Donard, uh, which has a standing stone with Ohm on it uh, in the village. This wasn't the original location. Apparently it was moved about three times. Around 73 kilometres into our route, we reach the little town of Baltinglass on the River Slaney. Uh, it features this great abbey uh, built around 1170. Um, so the oldest parts of this, I think, are, are around 1170, particularly the cloisters. Uh, it's worth spending a bit of time wandering around this, particularly if, like me, you get good weather and you're probably a little bit tired from the journey. Uh, one feature in particular to look out for is the pyramidal tomb uh, beside the abbey, uh, which was built by a local rich family. The square in the town has a statue uh, for the 1798 rebellion and specifically to Michael Dwyer who held out in the Wicklow Mountains for quite a while. Uh, I was stopping off here for uh, dinner in one of the local pubs. Uh, this was back during the um, substantial meal period uh, so it was quite entertaining that uh, when I went through the bar there were a load of local overlays sitting there drinking pints with menus in front of them and when I left later on the same fellas were still sitting there with the menus use in front of them and fresh pints. <laughs> This was a long trip and around 110 kilometres I'm finally getting to Moyne Bueg uh, and I take the, the River Barrow navigation route uh, because this is where I was camping for the night at one of the lock gates. Uh, there's a few lock gates and other spots along the river where you could definitely do a dawn to dusk camp. Uh, the river itself is lovely to follow. It is a fairly rough surface. It would be hard work for instance if it had been raining because it would be muddy. Uh, so at times I took to the hills. Um, but then I came back on the barrow to do the final stretch uh, down to St Mullins. So there's a lot going on in St Mullins, um, although the village itself today is pretty sleepy. It's another 7th century monastery, uh, but it feels like a place that probably gatherings and worship of some sort was going on for quite a long time before Christianity arrived here. And the, the location became incorporated. It has that buzz to it, basically. Uh, there's also the gravestone of the last High King of Ireland, who was actually Welsh and brought in to help fight the Normans, basically. Uh, and then there's a High Cross, which is, I think, from about the 11th century. Uh, so again, this is well worth a, a stop and a visit. Some of my photos here are from a previous visit, which was in December. So that's why there's no leaves on the trees. I decided to mix them in. Uh, and then, of course, there's the Norman moat, uh, which could well have been built on an earlier con because they often did that um but uh yeah that, that was basically a fortification you build a hill and then you put a little wooden castle on top of it after St Mullins, it's about 30 very hilly kilometres to Ballyhack and the ferry crossing. Once you're over on the other side, you get to Dunmore East fairly quickly. Uh, going down via Woodstown, there's an interesting alternative route, which is what I ended up taking, uh, which brings you right down the bottom and then up a dirt track to reconnect to the roads near Dunmore East. Dunmore East itself, as you can see, is a very pretty little seaside town. Uh, it's got some great uh, cliff walks around it, some great swimming opportunities and I think one of the spectac most spectacular beaches I've ever seen in Ireland. So I hope you found that little trip video useful. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up, help me get it out to more people uh, and do subscribe to the channel to see future content. Check out the video description for a link to the actual route map and you'll be able to download a GPX file from that so you can reproduce it exactly. Uh, I use Cycle Travel for those, great site. Um, if you want to follow my future adventures live, uh, as I'm traveling, I post photos and video from the roadside to my Instagram account. So that's also e-bike touring life. So give that a follow. And yeah, hopefully uh, I'll see you on the road. And finally, if you've something to tell me about this video, your own opinions, whatever, your experiences, just post a comment. I do check regularly for comments and I respond to basically anything that's anyway sensible whatsoever.
Uh, that particular video is the last of a sequence I'm doing at the moment on cycling to the Neolithic, uh, which are basically trips I've done that involve visiting stone circles, other than more often Bronze Age, um, and kinds around Ireland, Scotland and Wales. Do check out that playlist. Um, I have a lot of content on the channel, I think about 145 videos so far, uh, about uh, two thirds of those are videos that document particular troop trips I've made, uh, but the other third are how to videos that talk about aspects of cycle touring and backpacking, uh, and in particular doing so via an e bike. Uh, so you might want to uh, check out those different videos, have a look through them. I really want to encourage more people to take up this kind of low impact tourism, slow tourism, whatever you want to call it. Uh, so hopefully, you'll watch them, feel inspired, and then I shall meet you on the road someday.